Hi and assalamu alaikum everyone. Today we will be continuing with biological molecules and we will be starting with polysaccharides today. Okay, now similarly uh, as with the monosaccharides and disaccharides, polysaccharides, okay, poly tells me it is something related to many. Okay, what are polysaccharides? Polysaccharides are the most complex carbohydrates. Okay, and the characteristic is they do not have any taste. They are non-sugar group. Okay, examples include starch, glycogen, and cellulose, and we'll be studying each of them. Okay, now there's some classification in polysaccharides. Okay, we have two types of polysaccharides here. We have storage polysaccharides, and we have structural polysaccharides. Now, as the name suggests. These polysaccharides are used for storage purposes and examples include uh, starch okay and that's used in uh, plants okay that's as a form of carbohydrate storage in plants and we have glycogen as a form of carbohydrate storage in animals okay and similarly a uh, structural polysaccharides okay means they are used for structural purposes okay for example we have cellulose here and that we all know that's used in the making of cell wall okay okay so now let's look at this word polymerization this word has thing polymer okay it has a word polymer in it we all know polymer is a very long chain molecule that's uh, formed by joining many repeating units, repeating small units or monomers. Okay, zation is simple, uh, uh, simply a process. Okay, now what's polymerization? Polymerization uh, is many small units, okay, monomers, and then they combine to form a relatively larger unit that's polymer, that's polymerization. Now, general formula for the polysaccharides that we're going to study is this, okay, C6H10O5 to the power N, okay, multiplied by N. Okay. Now, why, you may wonder why we have two less hydrogens here and one less oxygen, that's because uh you should uh, remember that we were form when we were forming disaccharides we were carrying out a condensation reaction in which a water molecule was removed okay so for each uh for each bond in the polysaccharide chain we remove a water molecule so for n bonds we remove it n times that's the purpose of the n and Two less hydrogens and one less oxygen symbolizes that a water molecule has been removed. Okay, now let's move on to our very first polymer. Okay, and that's starch. Okay, we all heard of starch. A starch is a polymer of alpha glucose. Okay, starch has two types of chain structures. Let's see. Okay, so the first one we are going to study is amylose. Okay, now let's study, let's see the formation of this amylose. Now, as we said before, it, it needs to be formed through alpha glucose. Okay, uh, we have many alpha glucose here. Okay, as you can see, and they are joined together by alpha 1 4 glycosidic bond. You can, con uh, you can consider them of many maltose units joined together or many individually uh, alpha glucose units, whatever, uh, but just consider them as a long, very long chain. And these monomers, okay, alpha, glu alpha glucose units are joined together through uh, alpha 1, 4 glycosidic bonds, okay, as you can see. Now, what happens is, that we have forces of attraction between these glycosidic bonds okay as you can see i've made these uh, dotted lines that show the forces of attraction between these glycosidic bonds now what happens is that when we have one-sided forces of attraction okay you can see we have it uh, like this only now this causes uh, the amylose to take 
to take this helical shape okay it's like this like a spring shape structure so as i've written the attraction between these bonds result in the formation of long coiled helical and unbranched chain structure okay why unbranched because there are no branches it's a straight chain structure okay and helical and coiled as i've told you it's because of the attraction of the glycosidic bond it takes a special shape okay and long why long because uh we have many monomers connected together uh, through alpha 1 4 glycosidic bond okay this is important now the second type of uh a starch uh, we're going to study is amylopectin okay it's in a sense similar to amylose uh, that we have alpha 1 4 glycosidic bond but we also have another thing okay now what happens in this we have a main chain okay you can call this a main main chain or a main backbone okay that's backbone just like uh, the longest continuous carbon chains in organic chemistry okay so uh, this this long chain this main chain is connected with alpha 1 4 glycosidic bonds okay just like in amylose but the main difference is that we have another chain okay and that other chain is is uh, comparatively uh, shorter than the ma main chain okay and this is also connected in the by uh, alpha 1 4 glycosidic bond as you see but but how this chain okay this sub chain or you can call this a branch is connected with the main chain through alpha 1 6 glycosidic bond now this is a new thing now why 1 6 okay uh, that's because the number the the respective carbons that are involved are carbon number one okay and carbon number six as you can see here we have carbon number one here and we have carbon number six here okay they are joined together by this bond that's why it's called alpha one six glycosidic bond okay now this is the structure of amylopectin there are many branches okay i've just shown one branch and this continues on and on this also continues okay this is how it's okay so let's quickly go through this amylopectin also contains a numerous alpha glucose units okay as you stated before and they're joined through alpha 1 4 glycosidic bonds and in, in addition to this at regular intervals okay there are alpha 1 6 glycosidic bonds as well that produce branches okay this result in the formation of a smaller more coil now the smaller this is comparing we are comparing this with the amylose okay amylose was longer and this is smaller more coiled more coiled more coiled than amylose okay that's compact and it's a branched chain structure you notice amylose was an unbranched chain structure okay? these differences are very important you should remember this now let's look at our second polysaccharide that is glycogen okay that's also a polymer of alpha glucose it resembles starch okay it resembles starch mainly amylopectin okay it resembles mainly amylopectin okay but we have two main differences okay it contains branched coiled chains only okay so we have only branched and coiled chains in glycogen and the second difference is that's much more heavily branched than amylopectin so it's even more heavily branched than amylopectin so it's very 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 compact as well and it's heavily branched so Okay, and it's also known as animal starch because it's a uh, form of storage of carbohydrates in animals. Okay, so due to these two differences, these two differences, okay, glycogen has a higher storage capacity than starch. The reason is obvious because it's much more compact, 
density okay so it's higher storage capacity meaning it has a more density density is density is defined as uh, number uh, the mass per unit volume okay so in in a ma in this uh, glycogen we have more mass okay we have uh, the more mass is uh, in less volume so that means generally we have a higher density okay, that's why we have a higher storage capacity okay as certain more number of glucose units per unit area okay okay it also acts as an ideal storage compound in animals okay may in liver and muscle cells okay more glucose in limited space it, this is an advantage of this it gives supplies or gives more glucose in limited space because we have less space available in animal cells as you know animal cells are generally smaller than plant cells okay so in less space we are getting more glucose that's a great advantage okay so now let's move to our final polysaccharide and that's cellulose cellulose as you can see it's a polymer of beta glucose okay now uh, we have these beta glucose ring now they, it has a special a unique uh, arrangement of beta glucose rings now uh, every adjacent beta glucose ring right and further on moving further uh, it's flipped 180 degrees okay yeah, like this as you can see in the diagram it's flipped 180 degrees now why is it flipped it is uh, flipped to bring the OH okay the OHs of carbon 1 and carbon 4 uh, close to each other okay okay otherwise they would have been like this okay they would have been like this and we do not want that we do not want that now how can you form a bond like this okay you cannot form a bond that's why uh, they are flipped okay so that the formation of the bond is possible now the same here we have uh, mm, one for glycosidic bonds but here notice something okay we have beta 1 for glycosidic bond that's pretty obvious because we are using beta glucose not alpha anymore okay okay now what happens is due to this 180 degree rotation or flip okay uh, what ends up happening that we have forces of attraction both above and below the ring structure okay like this i've made these dotted lines to indicate these forces of attraction okay. as you can see now this causes a very very uh, special structure for cellulose now it makes the cellulose a straight and unbranched and a rigid structure okay unbranched uh, for that reason that uh, it doesn't have any branches okay like uh, the amylopectin okay so we do not have any branches here and it's a straight straight chain structure and it's rigid okay now why is it rigid because if uh, if i have a rope okay consider a rope it's going like this okay on and on and if i pull this rope towards myself as well and someone else pulls this rope towards uh himself okay now what ends up happening is that this rope doesn't go anywhere okay assuming that they pulled with equal forces equal forces equal magnitudes now this this rope uh stays there at this position okay and it becomes kind of rigid okay so imagine this happening with this uh cellulose that you're pulling okay these attractions are both from above and below and they're pulling pulling a rope uh, from both sides and hence what happens is that the rope turns out to be rigid okay it doesn't uh, move or it's not flexible 
okay okay now uh, let's see a hydrogen bonding between cellulose chains we have hydrogen bonding between cellulose chains uh, because we have many OH groups and as you all know we have a, a, a great difference in electronegativities in uh, hydrogen and in oxygen so that's why we have partial charge distribution and what ends up happening is that there are hydrogen bonds from the lone pair of oxygen to the partial positive or the electron deficient hydrogen okay and now interesting thing is what ends up happening is due to these hydrogen bonds we form very strong very strong cellulose chains that are joined together okay we have 6 to 70 cellulose chains that are joined together by strong hydrogen bonds okay and they form they combinedly form a microfibril okay this is a microfibril and these many many microfibrils then 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 join together uh, through hydrogen bondings okay and they form cellulose fiber okay, that's a very strong okay, that's very strong you can see and this is the uh, the close up view of the cellulose fiber okay as you can see we have these uh, primary walls uh, of the plant cells okay these are the primary walls and we have this middle lamella and between these we have a, a net okay a net of cellulose fibers net of cellulose fibers cellulose fibers okay 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 finally let's go through this note okay and this note uh, we'll also tackle with the significance of that arrangement okay a specific arrangement of cellulose fibers okay so let's start a cellulose fiber has numerous beta glucose units okay we did that they join together through beta 1 4 glycosidic bonds showing a 180 degree rotation of every alternative unit okay hence glycosidic bonds are equally formed both above and below the plane of the chain that results in the formation of a highly rigid okay so properties very important unbranched and straight chain structure okay and many of these cellulose chains are further strongly held together by hydrogen bonds and they form a more stable structure called a microfibril okay we also did that uh, and many microfibrils are further attached through hydrogen bonds to form a stronger cellulose fiber having a very high tensile strength and rigidity now what do you mean by very high tensile strength now i'm pretty sure we all know the concept of stress right now uh, this 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 phrase means that the cellulose fiber uh, can withstand a very high stress okay stress is force per unit area so if you if you if you pull uh, the cellulose fiber it's very flexible it can stretch a lot okay it has a very high tensile strength okay this is the meaning of this okay let's see uh, there are numerous cellulose fibers present in the cell wall okay 20 to 40 percent of the cell wall is made up of uh, these cellulose fibers okay uh, arranged at random angles okay in the region between the middle lamella okay as we saw before and primary wall to provide high tensile strength okay as we discussed this high tensile strength from multiple directions okay now what does this mean multiple directions okay now we have we can also have high tensile strength in only one direction for example in in ligaments okay in ligaments we have high tensile strength in one direction in one direction but uh, in this okay 
because uh, why is it for direction because the the fibers okay whatever uh, we'll study that later are arranged arranged at one angle only okay but these but these these cellulose fibers they are arranged at random angles okay so this randomness creates tensile strength from multiple directions from this from this direction from this direction and from this direction okay this makes the cell wall okay it makes the cell wall very very flexible as well and it makes the cell wall strong enough to to prevent the cell from bursting when there's too much water inside the cell okay the concept uh, of osmosis and everything else okay okay so that's it for today we'll see you in the next video till then take care allah is